Now I said five minutes ago that I was going to ask you a very similar set of questions um, for GPs that I did with APs. I want you to have a look at what my next question was for the APs. Do you remember what question two was? You have a look at it. What did I ask you? Yep. So I wanted to say, just prove it, use the test. We will use the test in a minute. But the reason why I used the test was to show it was an AP in order to answer the second question, which was, tell me, when does it hit negative? When does it hit negative? Okay. Now, I hope it's going to become clear in a very brief moment, and after this table is done, that I cannot ask this question for a GP. Or, I mean, I can, but it's a bit meaningless, really. Okay. So let me try and illustrate for you. Why? Again, I'm going to do a bit of a compare contrast here. Okay? I'm going to think about APs, and then I'm going to think about which role went to GPs. <coughs> <coughs> All right. Now, what I want you to um, get a feeling for is um, how do APs and GPs think of them kind of like, kind of like little objects, little living objects that behave in a certain way. Okay. Just like when you think of functions, right? You can think of linear functions, and parabolic functions, and hyperbolic functions, and each one sort of acts in a kind of way, and you get a feel for it, right? Like, we've come to the point now where if I say x squared, it's actually hard to not think of the shape of a parabola, because you guys have been working with it so long. Now, I want to get this, I'm actually going to give you some pictures, we're going to draw some things together, to try and get a, get a feel for how APs and GPs behave, based on... Remember, there are only two numbers, two numbers that define an AP or a GP. And those two numbers are either um, the first term and common difference or the first term and the common ratio. Okay, so if we think about what's happening to each of these, first term difference, first term ratio, we will get a sense of how the different kinds of APs and GPs um, behave. Okay. Yes? So is this the second question or not? So this is my reason why I can't ask the second question that I asked before. Okay. Okay. I can't ask it of GPs. And when we get to this last row of this table, probably before that you'll see what's going on, but when we get to the last row, you'll see yeah. why. Okay. So what I want to muck around with is that, that question was about sine, about positive negative. Okay. So I'm not interested in like magnitude, I'm just interested in is something plus or is it minus. Okay. So I'm going to use two colours here. I'm going to go, what shall I choose? I'm going to go black and green. Okay. I'm going to use black for negative and green for positive. Okay. So let's think about the simplest possible case. If I have an AP and the first term is positive and the common difference is also positive. Okay. Uh, I know my table, <laughs> I'm starting to fill it out from the right. It looks a bit backwards, but you'll see why, hopefully why. Um, if I have a first term that's positive, and I have a common difference that's positive, okay, what will all of the terms in the AP be in terms of sign? They will all be positive, because you start somewhere above zero, and then you just keep going up, right? You just keep going up. So in other words, Firstly, I'm going to say they're all positive. Every single term is positive. And I want to draw a picture for this. So if I imagine an a, a progression as like a um, kind of like a, a row of numbers that just go along, you know, first term, second term, third term, and so on, all of them are positive. I suppose I could write dot, dot, dot. Okay? It, it continues. They're all positive. Are you happy with that? Yeah. Now, in the same way, I could do the opposite case. Right? If instead I had a first term that was negative, and I also had a common difference that was negative. I don't get the picture. Okay. So I'm imagining the terms progressing along, and they're all going to be positive. Right? So they're all green as a well. Okay. Just trust me. Just trust me. Once we get a few more rows on here, you'll see. Now, if I started a negative, start below ground, and I just start digging, get even more negative, what will happen to all the terms in terms of sign? It'll all, all, all negative, right? All negative. Okay. So in other words, I've got the same kind of thing, but all negative. Now just to um, put some other language on this, right, to, to draw some parallels, this is a little bit like thinking, you know when we had quadratics? You remember quadratics? This is a bit like positive definite. Everything, any value you put in there, you pick oh, some yeah. term, you pick some term, and they're all going to be positive. And here, you pick some term, any term you like, they'll all be negative. Is that okay? Now, 
Let's think about that question I gave you, question two, with the APs, right? What was um, A, the first term? In terms of sign, what was it? It was positive, right? I think it was 100? Yeah. It was positive. But we worked out very quickly by testing that the common difference was negative. Do you remember that? Now, what will happen? Here's where our picture starts to get useful, okay? What happens is that there is a small number of terms, uh, a finite number of terms, in fact, that are positive, okay? But at some point, what was it, the 13th or 14th? Uh, I can't remember what it was. 14th. At the 14th term, it hits negative, and then it's negative forever, right? It never recovers. It's a little bit like starting above ground, and then you start digging. Because you're digging, you never turn around. It's never going to come back up and become positive. So therefore, my diagram is going to look like this. <coughs> Right? You start positive and then you hit negative. Now the reason why I've drawn this negative part so much bigger is because this green part is finite and the black part is infinite. It never ends. So no matter how big this is, like you could start at a million and take a long time to get to negative. But once you get there, this is always going to be like disproportionately longer than that. It'll be infinite times longer, actually. Um, so therefore, what are we getting here in our picture? It's positive, right? And then it becomes, how does it behave? It becomes negative, all right? You can probably imagine what I'm going to put on the next row, right? Because there's only one other alternative versus all positive, sorry, both positive, both negative, positive, negative. What's the other option? Negative, positive. Negative, positive. So if I start below ground and then I start climbing, Right? I'm just going to have the same picture but in reverse. Right? Some finite number of terms will be negative. And at some point, I go above sea level and I stay there forever. Okay? So I'm going to do the reverse. I'm going to start negative and then I'm going to hit positive and stay there. Okay? Now here's where it starts to get interesting. Okay, because now we're getting at the heart of why I can't ask that question that I asked with APs, can't ask it with GPs, okay? Or at least I can't in a meaningful way. Let's start off in the same kind of situation, okay? The simplest thing is, if you've got a first term in a GP that's positive, and if your common ratio is also positive. Okay, you happy with that? All right, now therefore, yeah, for instance, this term that I, sorry, this. GP that I gave you before has a positive first term and a positive ratio. And you can see this thing's just going to climb and it's going to climb forever. It's just like scenario one. So we've got this happening. Okay? Everything, all terms in my GP will be positive. Now you see how it's behaving? Now, it's important that you see, even if you've got like a really small number in here. Like, this is a GP that's growing. Do you see that? But I could just as easily have a GP that's shrinking. What kind of value for R would I want if I want a less GP that's shrinking? Zero. R. Less, than less than zero. I want one that's less than Great one, don't I? Zero, less than one. Because if I have a value less than one, like say a half, let's think about R equals a half. Okay, then I'm gonna have three, uh, three over two, one over one and a half, three quarters, three eighths, three sixteenths. It's getting smaller and smaller and smaller, but in terms of sign, it's still behaving just like this, right? Okay, now, for reasons that I hope will become clear in a second, right? Instead of going to this case, I'm going to a slightly different case next. I'm going to imagine if I start negative, and if my common ratio is still positive. Okay, think with me. Think, think, think. What if I change the first term in this situation here, if I change the first term to <coughs> negative 3? What would the next terms be? Oh, There'd be negative 3, then negative 6, then negative 12, then negative 24. Do you agree with that? So what's my picture going to look like? It'll be the whole thing with black. Okay, now here's the fun and hardest picture to do, okay? Our last case, and the reason why I only have one row rather than two rows at the bottom here, that's not an accident, okay, is that if I now make the common ratio negative, right? 
as it turns out, it doesn't really matter for our intents and purposes. It doesn't matter whether you start with a positive or negative. Right? You can have a positive or a negative in here. And more or less, the same thing will happen. Let's just imagine here, let's leave A as 3. But let's make R negative. R equals negative 2. Let's just try that. How would this sequence be different? And the answer is, the first term will still be 3. The second term will not be 6 though. It will be minus 6. What will happen to the second term? It'd be positive. It's still 12. Why is it still 12? Why hasn't it changed? Two squared. Minus 2 squared. When I get to the second term, I'm squaring, right? So the negative 2, the negative will get lost, right? In fact, for this, this term, and a out of the 4, and a out of the 6, and all of those even powers, the negatives will disappear. But for all these odd powers, you'll get that negative, right? What will the 11th term be? Will it be positive or negative? Uh, positive. 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 The 11th term positive. will be positive. Because it's an even the reason you can know is two ways. You can appeal to the pattern, right? Have a look at the pattern. Which terms are positive? The first, and third, and fifth, and seventh, and ninth, and eleventh. All the odd terms will be positive. The other way is you could appeal to the formula. You can say, well, it's a r to the n minus 1, and n is 11. So that means the power will still be even, right? Even though here I've got 2. If minus 2 to the power of 10, it's still the same number. So now, because I've got this flip-flopping nature, what does my diagram look like? Okay. Green, black, green, black. Yeah, okay. So in my particular example, I'm going to start like this. Actually, I'm going to draw it like this. We'll see why in a second. Maybe you can do the same. That'll do. Okay, right, so what's going on here, right, I know that strictly speaking I would have a different version if I changed my first term, if my first term were negative, instead of going green, black, green, black, green, black, it would just go black, green, black, green, black, green, okay, but essentially I've got, remember I'm trying to think about behaviour, behaviour, I've got the same kind of behaviour, this is called alternating. Does this look familiar? Does the word seem familiar? We looked at the alternating harmonic series yesterday, right? Well, this is an alternating GP, and plenty of GPs are alternating. All you need is this condition down the end. Now, can you see why I couldn't ask you that question, right? When does it first become negative, right? Well, it'll either be the only way to get a first negative term, right, is you're either all negative, in which case, why ask the question, or it's the first or second term. Those are the only possible answers, right? Um, you don't get this kind of behaviour like you have with an AP because APs and GPs, despite having so many things in common, this one little difference makes them behave drastically differently, okay? 